Hey, it's the Ferg Dog. So, Dustin hit me up, and he wanted to know what advice I would give to someone that was just starting out with gravel riding, and kind of what I thought would make for a good gravel bike for someone that maybe isn't familiar with it. So, here you go. Short answer is, run what you brung. Long answer is, do what feels most comfortable. Neither one's very helpful. So let me try to explain it and hopefully by the end uh, we'll have something figured out. So here's the thing about gravel. It's kind of a made up category. The truth is people have been riding off road on whatever for forever. But here's what's cool about it. To the layperson, it opens up a lot of doors. They don't have to think, oh, I need a road bike to ride on the road. I need a mountain bike to ride in the mountains. I need a cross bike to ride cross stuff. Instead, you can have a gravel bike that does a little bit of everything. Like, oh, I'm gonna ride on the road to this badass trail, get rad for a few hours, come home totally gorked and feel good about myself. Pretty cool. So then comes the problem of, well, what do we call gravel bikes? Kind of weird, right? So here's the thing. That is a gravel bike. Two by 11, compact crank set, wide range in the back, gravel bike. Big clearance for tires, gravel bike. Geometry, no pun intended, they aren't reinventing the wheel. It's pretty normal stuff. But here's the funny thing. But this is also a gravel bike. One by, big tires, you know. On paper, kind of the same thing. So it gives, right? So this is where we get into the first part of my answer. Run what you brung. For years, I was just riding roads like this on my road bike. Not that I didn't know any better, it's just what I felt most comfortable on. So I was able to do these trails with relative ease. So then we get into the second part of my answer. And you want to ride what's most comfortable. So depending on your background, maybe you're into track bikes, you want something a little bit steeper. Maybe you come from mountain bike background and you want something with a little bit more slack angles. That's where the nuance of geometry kind of comes into play. So you want to find a bike that you're most comfortable with and you want to ride. When I worked at bike shops, the one thing that I would tell people is, I want you to be stoked on your bike. So you should be stoked on your bike. So the things I would most definitely recommend, because you're riding off-road, you're going to want something with a lot of hand positions. So drop bars comes into play here. Flare drop bars, it's up to you. I like a traditional bend. That's just me. Gearing's really important. So when I'm talking about gearing, I'm talking about something that would give you at least a one-to-one -one ratio. If you don't know what that is, that's where you have the same number of teeth in the front to at least the same number of teeth in the back. The bigger that you go with your cassette, the easier it is to pedal uphill, ride over rough stuff. If you're just starting out, you're just looking for recommendations, something with a compact like a 34 that goes to a 34 or 32, depending on how you like to ride, would be great. The easier you can get in the back, the better. The truth is, the more you spin, the higher your cadence is, the easier it is to get over the rough stuff. All right, so there you have it. Hopefully I answered your question. And here's a recommendation for you. I personally ride the Ritchie Carbon Outback Breakaway. It rides just like a steel bike in that it absorbs a lot of the noise vibrations. I really like the way that it handles. It has kind of steeper geometry than one would expect. So for me, in my background, it's a bike that appeals to me. I actually have a setup very roadie-like with a 120 stem, which if you're unfamiliar, is pretty long for off-road riding. I'm also riding the Ritchie Stream 2 carbon handlebar. What I like about that, again, traditional drop, something I'm a fan of. Flat top section, so when it gets really rough on long stretches, I have somewhere nice to put my hands. When it comes to gearing, I'm running the Praxis compact crank set. It's a lightweight alloy crank set. I don't have to worry about damaging it. I like having the compact gearing, again, for getting up hills. In the back, I'm running Rival long cage Y-Fly rear derailleur with a 32. Not quite the one-to-one -one that I was talking about earlier, but I'm pretty comfortable with it. If I were to make a recommendation, of course, I would say get a Ritchie, they're great, but maybe it's not in your price point. And maybe if you're just starting out, you wanna get something that's a little bit more affordable. Surly makes great bikes, I'll be honest. They're super affordable. One of my first uh, off-road bikes was a Crosscheck. I loved it. Rode it until it broke. So maybe don't break the bank if you're looking to just try something out. So find something that's comfortable, that's affordable, and go with that. You can always upgrade from there. 
nothing's worse than spending an arm and a leg on a bike that you end up hating. So with that, get out there, go do some riding, and have a good time. Players, I hope you found that informative. If any of you are new to cycling or gravel riding and have questions that weren't answered, please feel free to drop them in the comments. Anybody who has experience with this stuff that wants to fill in some blanks or maybe answer a question that somebody else posts, please feel free to do it. I would love for people to start interacting and, and meshing with each other a little bit more. Thank you guys for hanging out. More good stuff coming. Call to action, subscribing, super easy way to support the channel. Like it if you're into it. I got some printed good stuff available. You guys rule and we'll see you soon.